この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome back everyone. I'm back for episode 75 of Ginga e u d e n Setsu. I literally just stopped recording and then started recording. So,、uh, last time on Ginga. Lots of conversations, brewing up、uh, some new plots. Rubinsky's back. We knew that already, but he's,、uh, he's got his eye on Lang as the potential、uh, person to turn, the, the new puppet for him. That's the word I should use, because that's the word he used.、Um, Young's in a, a difficult spot, both literally in terms of his position in the world and、uh, fleet strength and resources and stuff like that. Also, figuratively, in terms of not knowing exactly what to do from here、uh, and being faced with. An unstoppable enemy given his current uh, uh, literal position and stuff.、Um, we talked about sending Konev back to back to Fasan to meet with the merchants and stuff. Could be interesting. But the big thing that I'm thinking about is we got a letter at the end of the, next,、uh, end of the last episode. And、uh, it said something about Royenthal being a naughty boy. Reintel's off being a naughty boy on Fazan, and that's causing enough problems for Reinhardt to take notice. Result. We're gonna see what happened there. Yeah. We also, we, we hashed some things out between Kataros and、uh, Chenkop,、uh, along with hashing things out between Yulian and Yang and Poplin and Kataros, and a bunch of, bunch of conversations happened. In any case, I just want to get right into the next episode and find out what Bad Boy Roy and Tall has been up to. So let's do that. I've got the episode up. It's at zero seconds. There will be multiple versions of this reaction video, picture in picture version with the video up there in the description, timer based version on YouTube, discussion at the end, beep beep timer at the beginning. Beep beep timer goes here. Is he there at Reinhardt's behest? I assume so. Be gone. So, what you want to talk about? See that new movie? All right. 
so yeah what kind of disquieting signs Oh. Wow. That was a long time ago. Okay. Fair enough, but what if he's been led astray by somebody who has a grudge against Roy and Tall? Oh, that guy. Oh. And he'll find the lady. So he's already got a bit of a distaste for him. Okay. Smart. With unexpected ease, and then it shows Lang standing there. I think it would be. What? No. <sighs> All right, Lang, what's your game? It's looking much better. Oh. That could be twisted. So... Mm-hmm. That was a cold stare. Oh, I'm concerned, Lang. I'm concerned. How's he going to feel about that? Not so good. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You fucking what?
I've done nothing. Fair enough. Deep breaths, bro. Deep breaths. Damn. Yeah, I really don't think there's much of a problem here. What? True. You've had traitorous thoughts, but you've never been a traitor. Hmm. Fair point. I mean, that would be cool. Cool. Good. Why do we keep focusing on him and having heavy breathing? Okay. How are you going to play this, Royental? Damn, folding chairs? That sucks. Yep, that's me. Yep. Going straight for the throat, are we, Mittermeier? But also deflecting. Mm. 
A little too far. Yep. He's a little glowy. <coughs> but... <coughs> Ooh, ooh. Is he telling the truth, though? If he is, then Alfreda lied. Way back. Oh, he's still alive. Where are they right now? Yo. Wow. It's a hell of a way to make an entrance. Right. Unwavering support. So why is Reinhard bringing this situation up? Yes, it will be a useful card in the future. Ha <laughs> He's a great drinking buddy. <laughs> Pretty confident. <laughs> Bluff called. Wow, punctuating this conversation with lightning makes it really intense. Super awesome. I like this guy. Bring him on board. Nice. 
So why bring that up now? Fair enough. Damn Oberstein. So what do? Who? Okay. Oh! Oh, way back then? Oh, I remember that. Oh, wow. So they still homies. Play it cool. Play it cool. You double wrist it by by deflecting blame at Lang and uh at Doberstein. Sad days. Uh huh. Okay, that makes good sense. Says so they harbor a grudge against him. Yeah. Can't let it happen again. Interesting that there's this other faction. Okay. That's possible. Becoming the hate sink.
Okay. No. Which were directed toward Royenthal. So is she thinking perhaps this is an opportunity to get rid of a potential future threat? Deciding how she wants to play this. Where's Mecklinger headed? Oh. They're sending Mecklinger? Restrain his activities. So you're a watchdog. Okay. Okay. Pretty schemey. Schemes and plots and schemes and plots and schemes and plots. Oh, no preview, no preview, no preview. Okay, got it. Almost forgot it, but I got it. Okay, schemes and plots. Rental under fire. Um, and the accusation comes from Oberstein and Lang. Now, because of the, 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 the quick succession of events, I don't want to say that Lang has been compromised by, by Rubinsky yet. I don't, I don't think he has. I think he's still... Acting off of like previous information, um, his grudge against Royenthal for slighting him during the the meeting, and just just generally at odds with him, and then Oberstein and Royenthal have also been kind of at each other's throats, partly due to Lang himself. Um, so that makes good sense. What we don't really know is just how big a hand Oberstein has in this uh, this accusation. Like he and Royenthal have been up against each other. But that this seems dangerous if Oberstein is really running with this. Um, but some of the things he says specifically to to Lang in this episode make me think that that he is pulling the strings behind the scenes. Don't disappoint me, you know. Okay. Okay. There's an interesting contradiction here. 
Um, and it, it, it puts us as, as the audience in a bit of a weird place because we don't know necessarily who to believe. Like, we can't trust Roy and Tal completely because we know the rebellious nature that, that, that is his character. It's who he is. And we've, we've heard some of his thoughts in the past. Uh, so, and, and those align very well with what Elfrida said, which is when he learned that there was a child, I'll aim even higher. That lines up with the Roy and Tal that we as the audience know. Uh, although, what he claims that he didn't know about the child and that if he did, he would have immediately ordered it to be aborted because he wouldn't he doesn't view himself as being someone worthy of being a parent. That also fits the Ryan, the, the Roy and Tal that we know. So it's really it's tough to say from where I'm sitting who to trust and whatnot. But the way that this is framed is Roy and Tal's pretty damned innocent of this particular charge. Uh so I I mean he shouldn't be punished for this particular charge, at least not. Not in a big way. There's, there are a lot of interesting lines here, and a lot of interesting stuff being done with Roy and Tal's character. Uh, like, when, when he does eventually meet... Well, there's this line. I feel the utmost indignation if I were rumored to have undertaken looting and assault... And harm citizens through my authority and force. But to be said that I'm aiming for the throne through rebellion is an honor? For a soldier? Yeah, for a warrior of this turbulent era. That's a dangerous line, dude. And then we cut to the guy behind him, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's, a, I think, a heavy breathing here. <laughs> Half his lines in this episode are just gasp. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's deflecting. We get the the meeting. Are you doing this? Yes, I am. Mittermeier pushes forward. Deflects toward Oberstein and Lang. I keep within moderation, dude. Was unwise of me. I deeply regret my thoughtlessness. Nevertheless, it would be against my will to have that fact interpreted as a sign of rebellion. He's not outright saying, I have absolutely no desire to rebel against you. Because that would be a lie. What he is saying is, the fact that I was banging this lady shouldn't be taken as a sign that I'm a, re a rebel. Which is true, I think. I swear that it is not the case. And he can swear honestly. How about the pregnancy thing about aiming higher? Totally false. I didn't know. No clue. Would have made her aborted imme immediately. I have no doubts because I am not qualified to become someone's parent. I don't believe him a little bit, but I don't believe him. Reinhard calls back to this night, and this is this is an amazing scene. First off, we get to see Kaiser. We, we Kaiser. Oh fuck! Name, name, name. Siegfried. <laughs> we get to see Siegfried running around, doing things, being alive. The, the the lighting and the shots in this room are really intense. These intense angles. Yeah. And then Royenthal appears. We get real close up on his face. Ooh. The way he's shaded makes him very unsettling. Very unsettling indeed. And then the lightning strikes to punctuate what he's saying. And we get close to his his discolored eyes. Explained his stuff. Asked for help. Give you my loyalty and devotion.
and punctuate that with lightning. Oh, that's so good. Why do you want to help your friend so much? He's nice. I like him. What if I refuse? You're not going to do that. Boom, boom. <laughs> it's like a, a, a battle between giants, you know? It's fantastic. What do you think about the golden bombs? It's a decrepit body full of pus. Oh, well then. <laughs> You'll fit right in. <laughs> I remember it every day. Alrighty. I'll think about it. Give your duties to Mueller. And he's thinking along an, a different line. So this is the introduction of, of another faction within the Empire. Uh, those people who remember Siegfried and who, who worked under him and who hold a grudge against Oberstein for his insistence that Siegfried not be allowed to carry a weapon. And I think rightly so. Because it was a dick move by Oberstein to do so in the first place. And it did directly result in Siegfried's death and almost the death of the Kaiser. So. Should obtain this woman? Yeah, but good luck getting her from Oberstein. Okay, then we're introduced to Von Bureau. These guys, I remember them drinking together and then Siegfried was relatively lenient on them. He's, he was a good boy. Super good boy. Too good. Too good for this world. Truly grateful. But do you remember? I refuse to lose another, another commanding officer to Oberstein. So there are eyes on Oberstein right now. Lots of eyes. I have the feeling that, that Reinhardt is going to want to dig a little bit deeper into this affair by talking to Lang and Oberstein. Especially given the way that Mittermeier like, instantly called them out at the beginning of that hearing. It's worth checking into. So... This is an interesting one, uh, th uh, interesting thing that Ferner um, muses about. Perhaps the chief of military officer might be shielded, ser serving as a shield by gathering all of the hatred and, and negative emotions toward himself in order to, to remove them from the Kaiser, sort of taking the sins of the world onto him. That would be an interesting storytelling choice uh, because... Oberstein is not at at present very sympathetic as a character. Like, yeah, he's just kind of cold. So it would be hard for that kind of information to cause me to start to sympathize with him. But it might make me respect him a little bit if he really is doing everything he can to to deflect any negative negative feelings from the Kaiser to himself. That would be laudable. I think that would be, that would be good. But I don't know if it's the case. I don't know if that's something that Oberstein would do. And then Hilda evaded giving an immediate response because of her unease toward Royenthal that she felt a long, long time ago. And then Mecklinger is being sent out to just hang out in the corridor, make sure that Yang doesn't do anything crazy. This moment, this moment. So, okay, so this, this actually, this calls into question whether Oberstein is pulling the strings or whether this is an entirely Lang orchestrated situation. Because he tells him, don't disappoint me, Lang. As though he's going, you know, this is part of, 
the plan, you're following my orders type of thing. Don't disappoint me. And then the coldest fucking stare. If you, out of a personal grudge, denounce an esteemed vassal who contributed to this nation's establishment and weakened the dynasty's foundation, I'ma kill you! <laughs> Please, do not be concerned. I'm a little concerned. This is the face of a man who is a little bit concerned. Just, just a little bit, Lang. And I think you should be a little bit concerned, too, because you got a lot of people focused on you right now. Uh, might fuck yourself over. They might, might just give you enough rope to hang yourself. All right. So, interesting schemes and plots. The Rubinsky-Lang plot, I think, has not happened yet, and is just going on in, in the background, if at all. Uh, Brian Tulls is under suspicion of, of treason, essentially. I don't think he's going to get bopped for it. Not really. But it might come down to whether and, and what Reinhardt finds out if and when he goes and investigates further on Lang and Oberstein. And I think it might actually have, have a lot riding on what Hilda says uh, because, she, because of her position as a trusted advisor and because they've thrown some doubt as to like where she stands uh, on this Royenthal situation. So I get the feeling that if Hilda comes to Reinhardt and is like, yeah, it's probably cool, just ignore it. It'll be fine. Uh, or if Hilda comes to Reinhardt and is like, yeah, I think Royenthal's actually a traitor, that he might go along with either one. So I think a lot might hinge on Hilda. Mittermeier's got to just sort of, sort of bite his tongue and sit still for a while, not do anything stupid. And hopefully the, uh, the, the beardy guy, be beardy guy and... The other people who were under uh, Siegfried don't do anything super stupid. Like trying to get the lady back from Oberstein. Probably not the best idea. Probably better to just let this play out and let Reinhardt come to a decision. So we like completely ignored the Alliance and Yang and everything on that front for, for this episode. Pure focus on internal conflict within the Empire, which is interesting. We'll see what it bubbles out and brews into. I'm sure it'll be... I'm sure it'll be fun. Anyway, I'm running out of things to say, so it's time for me to wrap up. I've been Tiabu. This has been Ginga Ayudensetsu, episode 75. I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope to catch you in the next one whenever that comes out. It probably won't be tomorrow because Sundays are packed. But uh, I'll try to get these out more consistently, and I say that every time, and then I never do it. So uh, thank you to Discord boys who who poke and prod at me and are like, hey, Ganga, I'll, I'll do them. I'll do them. Um, like, I don't have a reason not to. It's just that, that blah, time consumption. Anyway, I, I said I wouldn't make any excuses, and I won't. So I'll see... I'll see you in the next one. Probably Monday or Tuesday. Peace.